The new Mantis X10 Fire Amp's performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant here with your daily dry fire practice video for active self protection. Uh, last week we did a holster draw analysis with the Mantis X. This week we're going to do the same thing, but a little differently. Uh, I ne neglected to cover strong side, and I know a lot of you carry that way. And we're also going to do shooting with our primary, our strong hand, dominant hand only shooting, and why that's important. So there's several things that happen that are different in the draw. When I draw from appendix, it's here when I draw from here. But I can wear an open cover garment, which is like a jacket, or an open shirt, and that allows me to get to the gun, but it still be concealed. That's the fastest way you're going to find. That's why you'll find most people who shoot IDPA wear a vest because it's much faster. Uh, it costs, once again, the time's about a quarter second. To do it from a closed garment to an open garment, uh, it's a big difference. All right. So I get an extra quarter second here, all right, and then I, uh, for appendix, or I get a quarter second here, but if I go closed, I've probably added half a second. It's a very slow draw, but that's the way we conceal our guns sometimes, and we just have to accept that the world is a compromise and work around it. Sometimes I have to carry strong side. There's two main reasons for that. Um, I'm in an environment that may be non-permissive. Uh, it's not against the law, but uh, it would be best if people didn't see my firearm. I'm wearing a jacket. I'm dressed to give a business talk. Then I have to go to strong side. The other thing is if I shoot IDPA and USPSA, they require strong side holsters. They're not very, uh, there's no appendix in those except for the limited division in USPSA if you want to shoot at Gabe White style. But I carry optics, so I, my world is a compromise. I've got to make the best compromises for me. So appendix works very well. There's some real advantages. There's some advantages on the strong side too and disadvantages for both of them. I have a whiteboard over here. You'll see me glance occasionally so I can give you a, a, a co <laughs> coherent narrative and I don't miss any important facts as we work our way through this. So if I had an open garment like a jacket, my hands are going to start in this position. This is a very important position. Craig Douglas calls this the fence position, the hands up position. Uh, there's a pretty good book on it called The Fence. And this is a good way to interact with people. All right. What's going to happen when I go to move my jacket out of the way is this hand simply going to come to this position. This hand's going to catch my chest and rake it out of the way and then circle back into my thumb. The other hand's going to remain here where it's safe. I'll draw the gun to this position and rotate it towards the target. I bring it underneath my dominant eye and straight to the target. Very simple for me. I'm right-handed. I have a right, right dominant eye and back it goes. One of the reasons I shifted to optics is um, I get doubling on the sights sometimes because the eyes, especially when I get tired, fight for a little bit of dominance back and forth. So with a red dot, I just look at the target. I don't have that fight. I don't have that doubling. But it was something I learned to work around. Everybody's vision is very different, so you have to do what's right for you. If you were cross-eyed dominant, when you made the draw, two things that you can do, you can either bring it directly underneath the eye and push it straight out and draw it in, okay? Or you can bring it up to the middle and turn your head slightly. The choice is yours. Okay? Work through it. Uh, some of you may have to close an eye. That's okay. It's okay. I know there's a compromise there. I can't see as well peripherally, but it's really more important if I'm going to decide to shoot because my sights are on the target, my fingers are on the trigger, and I need to see clearly what I'm going to shoot. That's my main priority at that point. All right, so we've got a good strong side draw going here. Our hands are up. What we're going to do is move that out of the way and get quickly to the gun, bring it up, let the hands connect, and there we go. So for me, my draw in this position is a 1-2. My draw in this position is a 0.9. I get lower scores, but that's my average. Don't tell me what your lowest score is. Don't tell me what your highest score is. Tell me what your average score is. And we're going to need at least 10 draws to get to that and work through it. Manus is really good at that, giving you a pretty good average across the board of what you're doing. So once again, open garment, hands are up. Go so here. Now, if this hand was busy pushing somebody out of the way, holding a flashlight, nothing changes for this draw. Simply rotate it, bring it straight out into the target. That makes it real easy. Be careful when you go back to the holster. I see a lot of people muzzling their foot and their leg when they come back. So as you draw with one hand here, straight out. Now, be concerned about that foot. Make sure you point the muzzle in a safe direction and push it straight down. 
I'm using the SIG 225, which is my deep concealment gun. I got really big hands, so uh, some of the smaller guns simply don't work for me because I get all over the controls. You know, it's when you got big hands, you can't use really tiny guns. My smallest gun is a J-frame, which is just a, a very deep concealment gun. It goes great in the winter in a pocket with a holster. I can use that well. But now we're using a small gun. It's important to practice with your carry guns occasionally, the smaller ones, because they are a little more difficult to shoot. The smaller the gun, the harder it is to shoot. If you understand the basic fundamentals of marksmanship, you can change platforms. I really suggest you work out on one gun, one style of gun, and get very good at it. Okay, so we've talked about the hand motion to here, to here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to untuck my shirt and simply blouse it over this gun. All right, so there it is. You know, it still prints. There's a little, little it's going to show. Everything always shows a little bit. Most people don't pay attention to it. Um, but I like to keep it to the 3 o'clock most of the four o'clock. The further you get back, the less control you have on it. And if you were to fall down backwards, you get knocked down. And we see this in John's videos. It really can injure your back on it. it. Makes it nearly impossible to get to. So I want it to my side if I can. Now this is some place we're going to use both hands equally. We're going to bring both hands here. And we're going to clear the garment and then make a circle back to it and then draw the gun from that position. I found that cost me about an extra two tenths over an open garment. So if my hands are here, both hands come to the shirt, circle and grab the gun, bring it back up, make a good shot. Now, I'm using both hands against the shirt. What if my hand's busy, like we talked about, single hand shooting? I like to call this the, the dominant hand or the primary hand instead of the strong hand, because strong and support gets really mixed up sometimes. So uh, I'm going to refer to it as my primary hand. This hand's busy identifying the target. It's got a flashlight in it. Who's there? Very important question to ask if you're ever in a dark environment. Most of us don't live in a lot of dark, but I want to identify, hey, who's there? I see that they're a threat. So I'm going to go here and make that circle back. If you notice, it folded my shirt over and kept it out of the way. That's really important. Then I'm going to draw the gun straight up and press it straight out. Now, I won't be able to press as fast as I usually do because I have less support. I've really got to continue to clean up those sights and manage that trigger. That's the only way I'm going to get a good shot. You're really involved in that. It may be slower to shoot one hand, but you're more intensely involved in cleaning up the sights and, and making a good press on the trigger. Good news is when you go back to two hands, it seems remarkably easy. Okay? There's a time and place for, for one-handed shooting, uh, and it's important to master it, but it'll really help you master your trigger finger and sight alignment because you, you have to not make bad decisions with very little support. There's a set, certain amount of acceptable wobble in shooting that we have to accept as we shoot. So once again, this hand's busy. The hand hooks, circles, and presses that against the side. I bring the gun straight up, straight out to the target, and right under the eye. There's a lot of talk among people whether you should cant your hand or straight up and down. I don't think they talk about the real reason. Uh, a lot of people's shoulders go forward, so when they lift their hand, it tends to be turned sideways. It's because they have poor shoulder posture. You know, you may want to look in the mirror and see, do your shoulders roll forward? When you lift your hand, it's going to be turned. So that's going to feel a lot more natural to you because you've lived in poor posture. All right? doesn't mean it's the best way to shoot. It just means it's natural for you. So when you shoot, the recoil is going to go this way and come back down. So we usually have stringing that's diagonal across the target. Um, for me, I like to have just one way that I do things. So straight up and down, I lock underneath my armpit and then I shoot. So my stringing tends to be more vertical, which means it's on the target better. For me, that's more correct. Now, some people step forward with the other foot. Some people stand back. Um, I can tell you the truth. Two people I really respect disagree on this. Um, and in life, we may be more motion in more motion than we are stationary like we are in training. And it may not matter as much. You may not even be aware of it. So my suggestion to you is have a good stance. All right, Do what's natural for you. Keep that armpit tight underneath you. Keep that shoulders engaged. I hear a lot of people talk about how much they need to grip the pistol, but I really suggest that you stabilize the shoulder by not having it up, not having the elbow out, but rotating it down using the big muscles to stabilize it. And you'll notice that your recoil is like this instead of a big motion across. So once again, i got a closed garment, my hand's busy here. Circle, come back, grab the gun, circle to here, and push it straight out. Now all that still can be accomplished in under two seconds. Okay? There's a more sure way to do this if you're entangled. Some people pin the shirt behind it, then get to this position. That's fine too. All right. Uh, 
but it is what? A little slower. So you have to make the decision based on you. The reason I like this is because they're all the same motion for me. I don't really change that primary hand motion. What does change is my non-dominant hand, my support hand, because it has different roles, but it always ends up in the same place. Some people like to pull the shirt straight up as high as they can, like they're up to their chin. One problem with that you need to think about is you put a lot of elasticity into a shirt like this. Watch what happens when I pull it to my chin and I go. So in my force on force classes, what I see is people start to get the gun out and they let it go, and then we get the, the thumb being dragged out of the pistol. You gain nothing by pulling it a higher. You simply have to clear the gun. Okay? The butt is the big problem on a single. That's why I like the circle and come back in. See how I'm just tucking it out of the way. If I grab this and pull too tightly and go up, see how it sticks on the butt? It's just not going to work for you. It's going to be very clumsy. You're going to have a very high failure rate with that. So think about this, circle and back into the gun. Uh, Mike Seeklander uses it. He's a great teacher, great shooter, national champion. You might want to listen to his advice. Uh, Air Marshal set up their training program. He knows a lot about what he's doing. And when you hear somebody like that speak, you really should pay attention because he, he goes through a lot of different styles from competition to self-defense training. This is a very effective way. If you only have one way to practice, I would suggest that the circle is the best way for one serious way to practice. All right? It can be used here at the appendix, it can be used here at the strong side, all right? and it works all the time. It's a very good technique. Let's talk about the Manus X. Uh, you have an uh, app in there that allows you to measure your dominant hand and your support hand, your strong hand, I think they call it, and your support hand. So, uh, you know, where I, I get high 90s when I go to one hand only, I end up to be low 90s because it just can't be as good. There's so much more motion in here when I'm trying to hold that gun still. If you watch my front sight and barrel right here, there's just a lot of movement. That's okay, I accept that. That's an acceptable level of movement. Now watch two hands on the gun. It's rock solid in comparison. So um, practice that. Uh, we may never need to shoot with the left hand for self-defense. It may come up, we don't know, all right? But it's really good to make your basics of fundamental marksmanship better because you have to take the, the not, you know, I hate to call it uncoordinated, but it's not as precisely coordinated as this one and we have to really focus on it and learn how to press the trigger. So if you understand how sights and trigger really work, you can just discipline this child to do the right thing and you'll have pretty good shooting. Oftentimes in my class when I make people shoot left-handed, they have higher scores than they did with their dominant hand because they do what? Pay more attention. The message is always pay attention to what you're doing, be totally involved with it. I made a little drawing up here for you guys because some of you asked me what the second page of the Manus X was. So I showed people my scores last week, you know, the bar graph, and then somebody very uh, was very quick to ask me, what does the second page mean? Well, it's an analysis of where the gun is and its movement, okay? So I have two different, this is the basic cumulative motion of it. This is what my appendix draw looks like, all right? Because my appendix starts from inside the middle line, it has to move across the middle line. So these are the axis. So I see it start here, and it comes here and moves to that position. We only move in circles. You don't move in straight lines very well. It's hard to draw a straight line, as you can see by my wonderful artwork. But we don't move in straight lines because our joints are all circular. You know, that's bending in a circle, all right? That's rotating in a circle. That's extending in a circle. We make a straight line by a combination of movements, and that's what the graph will show you. So for appendix, it probably should look something like this. And what that means is when I draw the gun from here, what's happening is it's rotating. See how it's outside the line, and it's coming back under my eye. So see that little S motion there? That's what the appendix looks like. If you have a laser on a pistol, you can do the same thing. You can kind of see what that motion looks like. So when it comes here, here, and back in. Now strong side looks a little different. Okay? Strong side is the bottom one here. And what we see is it starts in the middle. And what happens is as I draw and release, it begins to drop just slightly because my elbow is coming down. I don't want to keep my elbow up here. I want to draw and release. And then as I drive it out, it comes up almost in a straight line and straight out. You'll see a lot higher horizontal score on the bar graph with a strong side draw because it's simply covering much more distance than it does from here. All right, it's almost, un, you know, it's very little measurement that I see on it. But with strong side, it comes up and goes like this. So here's what you're looking for in your draws, all right? 
and you see that over and over and then you can start cleaning up your motion because now you have a representation in your mind of what your draw looks like. Let's look at that real quick with my hands here. So when I go here, see how that just, it just released a little bit and rotated. All right, I want it to come up, but I, I have a little bit right here of where my hand begins to drop. The Manus unit recognizes that as a drop. Okay, that's okay. Now, it's pointing towards the target, and I just want to move it in as straight a line as possible until my eye picks up the sight, my finger goes to the trigger, and I'm ready to shoot. So there's your basic analysis. Uh, use your bar graphs, use your analysis, do both hand shooting, practice that. This is a very important skill. If I'm engaged in grappling with somebody, I want to control the hand closest to the gun and be able to get to it with the other hand. See, that's a very learned motion for me. It's a very big practice. What I've done is take their, their hand that was close to my gun, which would be the left, and I've tucked it under my arm with an overhook or an underhook, depending on where they're at. Now I want to get to the gun. I'm going to go right here, and that's as far as it's going to go. So that clearing of the shirt is very important for me. It happens the same way in appendix. See, motion is similar. So work on that. See if that helps you guys some. Um, we've covered strong side now, two types of garments shooting with both hands uh, and how the analysis works on the Manus X chart. So look at those lines, go to that second page after the bar graph, just right after the bar graph, you'll see a bunch of movements through there. Show you guys real quick. So I don't know how well that shows up, but that's the lines, all right? And what I'm looking for is repeatability. And the big motions that are outside or inside are the outliers, and I wanna get the motion as smooth as I can here. You know, when they say slow, smooth, smooth is fast, they don't mean you can go slow forever. They mean you need to slowly dissect what's happening. Then you need to get rid of any herky-jerky motions in it, things that don't, don't go with it. And then you move it to the position with the greatest amount of efficiency, and then you go faster until it falls apart. All right, so there should be a point where you're picking up your pace, picking up your pace. Some of you told me you have injuries. I understand. Uh, life is very difficult when you have injuries. Um, one of the reasons I picked up appendix is I injured my shoulder. Let's focus on what you can do. Let's use that obstacle as a way to train ourselves. It's going to feel uncomfortable. Uh, you may have to shoot from time to time with your other hand. Let's work through that. Let's learn and we'll gain confidence and we'll get better at it. Uh, use your manis. Get some dry practice working. Tag me if you want me to answer a question for you. I, I'll try to be available as much as I can. It's always a pleasure, and I hope you guys are training hard, and I'll see you on the range.